welcome to Radio Graham. An Australian airline with the odd name of Qantas was founded 95 years ago. It's the oldest continuously operating airline in the world. It was founded in Longreach in outback Queensland in 1920. Land and Northern Territory Aerial Services Limited. Impressive name, isn't it? Big. Long. It was 1920 and an airline industry didn't exist. Not anywhere in the world. Sure, aviation was developing fast, but it wasn't exactly a serious business. Yet here was this new company with an ambitious business proposition to connect the east coast of Australia to its far north with air services carrying passengers, mail and freight from Brisbane to Darwin, the jumping off point from Australia to the world. Bring beer. There was just one tiny problem. They weren't even in Brisbane. They were in outback Longreach, a long way from anywhere, giving joy rides and taxi flights to local graziers, many of whom felt much safer on a horse. In fact, this grand plan was supported by just three employees, Hudson Fish, Paul McGuinness and Arthur Baird. And they only had two planes, one of them a second-hand war surplus which tended to boil over in the Australian heat. Finances were so frail, their backer, Fergus McMaster, took to calling early investments the donations. But things started to change. By 1922, with the help of a Commonwealth subsidy, Qantas was providing mail and passenger services between Charleville and Cloncurry. Imagine what could have been. Charleville and Cloncurry Territory Air Service. Cactus. With improving finances and their original name intact, they were ready to seize their big opportunity. It was 1933. The biggest airline in the world, British Imperial Airways, was looking for an Australian partner to meet them in Darwin and deliver mail down the east coast of Australia. Despite only having 12 planes and never having flown outside Queensland, Qantas won the contract. Fisher's obsession with safety, on-time performance, routes and frequencies was finally paying off. But was Fish grateful for the opportunity? Was he prepared to accept a junior role to the British? Hardly. Enter Qantas Empire Airways, an international airline which would meet Imperial Airways in not Darwin, but Singapore. Those colonials! And so the pattern was set. 
Where others were wondering about the future, they were inventing it. Where others saw obstacles, they saw opportunities. They didn't name Qantas for what it was, but for what it would become.